Today we shall be looking at my novel, Here I Am Not Dead, and why you definitely need to get a copy for yourself. So sometimes you don't heal from uh, childhood traumas, you know, and, and things that have happened to us. And that's exactly what happened when I was uh, documenting this book. I had that in thought, you know, just remembering how my dad passed away, uh, what kind of an impact that had on me. The fact that I was not able to deal with whatever happens in my life, especially when you're a teenager, you know facing all that rejection. And so just to go to maybe page 98, page 98, um, all I did was sit on my mother's bed when everybody else eulogized in the living room, singing, praying, and uh, planning for the burial. I had not accepted his death. I still feel like he's here with me sometimes. I have never healed from my father's death. I still dream meeting him. I have had numerous dreams and visions of my father. In my dreams, people say that he is dead, but I know he is alive. I dream not having seen him for a long time, then later he shows up and tells me, and uh, I tell him about what people have been saying, that he was dead, yet he's alive. He only smiles and says that those people are wrong. He is still alive. I am very happy to have him alive, even though people think otherwise. I tell him about all the things that I have been going through in his absentia and he tells me that now he is back, everything will be okay. Now that he's back, everything will be okay. What a nice feeling. My dad is still alive. I am woken up by my alarm clock. I have to go to work. Other times it's my mom. She prays so loud that I wake up only to realize that these are dreams. I do not understand because these dreams are so frequent that at times I think that my life is a long dream that I will one day wake up from. I will be very happy to live again. It's the protection that he provided to me that I miss. It is the times that he came through for me more than anyone else. It was the numerous gifts he bought me. It was his daily routine of blood drying my hair every morning. I felt safe and secure whenever he came to school to confront some teachers who were too hard on me. I did not imagine how to live without him. I guess my siblings too. My mother too. Although he was strict and firm, my dad was the best man I have ever met. He would wake us up at 4 a.m. every morning and tell us to study. Our sleepy faces tucked up in, our, in the palms of our hands tried to make out what was in our textbook. We would not understand why he would wake us up this early, given that we were only in primary school. He maintained that he wanted to give us what he never got when he was young, that he wanted to rescue our own future. He wanted us to rescue our own future. Now I have come to appreciate all this. And so, you know, I would just go along and just talk about how he would wake us up at, at 4 a.m. to study and actually just make us strong tea so that we don't sleep, you know, and how we also used to sleep in towns, you know. Uh, and, you know, just I would tell one or you would tell one, uh, please listen to my dad's footsteps. If he's around, then you know what you're going to do. So we sleep in towns. I would sleep and my brother's uh, uh, tongue comes. And so I, I just do remember all that. But then... Actually, it's the, it's the aftermath of you know, exactly what happened when he passed on that really made me just put this down because I, I faced a lot of, uh, I felt rejection and, and all that, you know. So friends, some of the things that I remember my dad doing for me, just like I said, he used to do my hair in the morning before I go to school. He used to really encourage us and that's very important for parents to affirm their children. Uh, and I remember, by the way, he's actually the very first person who bought me my first Bible, my first hairband, because, you know, he would say, I'm doing this for you so you don't think that anybody else can, you get what I'm saying. So really, and he had a favorite poem, which I think I've been trying to refer to when I'm faced with difficulty in my life. And so um, his favorite poem, which I have actually put down in uh, page 123, uh, my mom used to encourage me, and, uh, and I remember there is a time she sent me an inspirational poem uh, via WhatsApp titled Don't Quit by John uh, Greenleaf. 
This was a poem that my dad had brought home and hung on the wall. It had always been in the living room as a centerpiece for as long as I could remember. A constant reminder that one has to be resilient in, in life. It was as if he knew that there was a time that he would not be around. Probably his way of giving us hope after he was gone. Don't quit. That's a poem. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the fans are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but you don't quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns about. When he might have won, had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems low. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. You may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you are hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. Yeah, so you know, that's the poem that uh, my dad had hung on the wall and, and I think it's, it's quite an, an inspiration when, you know, he tells you, um, or Greenleaf tells us not to quit when things are very, very difficult for us and there is now what we should be doing. And the reason why I also thought of talking about this is because young people, and especially the youth, are going through very difficult situations in life and you find they really do not know how to navigate could this be the cause of the many suicide cases that we are experiencing currently? The fact that people do not read, you know, and, and they, they just want to be like the other person. And so just uh, when I'm sharing this with students or when I'm talking to young people, I would tell them that the first thing that you need to do when you're going through a uh, difficult situation is probably share. Find someone that you can talk to. Um, because I did look for this mentor. Sometimes you don't find them very easily, but you have to be very intentional. Share with one, two, three people. Sometimes you might think that if I share, then people will go talking about me and, and you know all that. But really, you don't have to care much about what they will say because we say a problem um, uh, shared is half uh, solved. So you'd rather just share. If they go talking about you, nine of them can go talking about you, but one will be the one who comes to rescue or assist you. So share, number one. And number two is you can journal. Just write down what you're going through. Put it down. Sometimes it might just turn out to be a book. And I feel it's therapeutic when you just put it down. And uh, just to think about it, uh, this turned out to be a book, though I had not intended for it to be one um, but then what if it's going to encourage someone else so journal put them down put the, them down in your own words and and who knows um, again uh, when I was writing this book I was writing number four my goal number one was to heal to heal from from my from my childhood uh, traumas you know to heal and number two was to inspire you know, so I realized if I had already achieved those two objectives, then I really didn't have, uh, I, I think I was done because, you know, I've been able to heal, I've been able to inspire. So do it for yourself. Number one, we said to share. Number two, we said to journal. And number three, I feel th th this is very important as much as it comes as a number three, it's to pray. Because the moment you pray to your, to your God, to your spirit, to your maker, you know, connect with your spirit, then you know, the much energy and, 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 and power that you get, you can never compare that with anything else. So pray, share, number two, journal, number three, pray. Pray, uh, prayers are palliative, very important thing in your life because you'll be able to now tell your God about what you're going through and you never know, you know. Um, I, I found prayer very, very important a very important aspect in someone's life because my mother used to pray every single day and I think she, I mean, she actually does it up to date, you know, three to five in the morning and she's praying for us and I think now I've learned if, if I'm going through a difficult situation, definitely I need to be, uh, to have that relationship with, with my maker, you know, where I can tell him about my problems and he's going to help me out to be able to solve them. So share, journal, pray. 
you know. And, and I think that's just about it. So definitely find the right books to read because you become what you read, what you watch, and, and what you listen to, you know. I do have found mentors in people that I've never met, but I, I watch and follow Lisa Nichols, uh, Les Brown, you know, definitely Oprah Winfrey, and Maya Angelou, you know. So really just, um, it's what you feed your mind. Yeah, and it's also about your life purpose. So let's all focus on our life purpose. In that way, we shall not be, we shall not find ourselves um, in a situation where we now want to commit suicide because things are so tough in our lives. So thank you guys, and please do watch, subscribe to my channel so that you can get very, very informative, encouraging uh, content. Cheers.